Good evening and welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of April 3rd, 2014. I'm City Council President Bill Dwight and I'll be presiding. Uh, tonight's agenda is going to feature, among other items, uh, a public hearing on the, of the Mayor's Capital Improvement Program uh, for fiscal years 2015 and 2019. Also, the authorization of a revolving fund account for the DPW Reuse Committee and a second vote on the Northampton Business Improvement District's amendment petition. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, for folks playing along at home, the proposed capital improvement program is available at the city's website at Northampton Ma, as in Massachusetts, NorthamptonMA.gov <laughs> forward slash 1405 forward slash capital dash improvement dash program. You can, if you want to do it more easily, just go to the main page. Click on the mayor's face, I think, and uh, it'll take you to his page where you can see it on the left-hand side. And, uh, before we convene a regular session, members of the public are invited to uh, speak on any topic of civic interest. Uh, when your name is called, please step up to the microphone uh, and state your name and address for the record. And please keep your remarks under three minutes. Um, there is a timer fading in and out over my shoulder here uh, that will show you the time that you have remaining. If your time has expired, please do not start a new thought. Um, if you continue to speak after I've requested you to finish, I reserve the right to recess the proceedings until you've quit the chambers. Also, please do not defame private citizens by name or address. Department heads and elected officials, well, we're fair game, although we still ask restraint and kindness. And also, the counselors are not allowed to respond, so if you present them with a question, it shall remain as a rhetorical question, then you could possibly follow up uh, once we're out in public and no longer in the meeting. So that said, with all those caveats, first up, um, Terry Masterson, please. As a preamble to comments, about the bid this evening, I wanted to stand up for my quick three minutes and walk through with you some tax figures as to where the city stands relative to bid fees and real estate values. I want to start off by saying that downtown Northampton is an extremely vibrant major city with over 67 stores and shops, 34 restaurants, three hotels, three bookstores, five jewelry shops, I'd say probably 300,000 square feet of retail space. We estimate that over half a million people will come and shop and visit here annually. We have also 300 hotel rooms with 100 new ones in that 300 on their way. I estimate that will generate up to 100,000 visiting guests into the city. It is a major downtown in need of clean maintenance and marketing. Page two, you can see bid fee comparisons. I thought it would be a good idea to let you see that even at the current bid fee of 050, we are totally equal to the other cities. If we go down to 025, we're the lowest in the state, and I give that to you on page two. Page three, I did some calculations of what are the actual bid fees so we can have a conversation about wh what are we talking about. All this conversation, you own a building that's worth three quarters of a million dollars, your bid fee is going to be about $1,875 or about $156 a month. So we're talking about a fee that is rather modest um, in terms of if it's a million dollar building, the bid fee becomes a $2,500 fee. Furthermore, the property tax of the city, which is $15.39 on a building worth $750,000, the property tax bill is about $11,000 or $900 a month. And we'll come back to that number um, a little bit. Um, I'm giving you bid budget comparisons to show you how our bid budget stands. I also gave you our tax rate table to show you where we stand there. Um, on page five and six, I give you a table of commercial and industrial tax rates. I also would like you to look at the fact that our rent ranges are comparative with other major cities. And I also give you some information about our tax base. And more principally, and I'm gonna wrap this up very quickly, at the end, I give you an com overall comparison that Northampton comparatively possesses the lowest tax rates and the lowest bid fees while commanding either parity or higher value in terms of property values and retail rent ranges. Northampton's commercial property tax base exceeds or compares with cities of larger size. 
There is an essential need for a downtown that is clean, welcoming, and full of positive events and attractions so that these values can be protected or grown. This in turn affects not only our quality of life, but the city's overall tax base and budget revenues. Thank you. Uh, by the way, that's Terry, <laughs> <laughs> Terry Masterson is uh, an employee of the city and he's uh, the, the economic development director, just so, because you didn't identify yourself, just so, and, um, will, and in serving in that capacity could be available for council questions when it comes time for deliberation. Natasha, you're up. <coughs> Hello, my name is Natasha Yakovlev. I live at 147 Nonatuck Street in Florence, and I'm here tonight as the director of the bid. You're going to have your second reading tonight of the bid's petition to lower bid fees, and I'd like to outline for you the full scope of services that we provide under our current fee structure, as well as what we will provide under our new fee structure should it be approved. During the winter months, the bid assists with sidewalk snow removal and ensures that all downtown curb cuts are passable for pedestrians on foot as well as those in wheelchairs. Throughout the spring, summer, and fall, the bid sweeps and power washes walkways, removes graffiti, and weeds the sidewalks and tree wells. In the next couple of weeks, you will see the Smith vocational students working on our planters, and in the spring, we will hang 96 flower baskets. In addition to cleaning and beautifying downtown, the bid is also an event producer, organizing and program programming sidewalk sales, restaurant week, the chalk art festival, the ice art festival, and we also co-produce with the DBC a new quarterly event called Girl Town. Our holiday programming includes <clears throat> marketing the Daily Hampshire Gazette's bag day promotion outside of its readership. We have 23,000 holiday lights lit throughout downtown. We coordinate the acapella groups who collect donations for the interfaith cot shelter while caroling. We market Northampton as a holiday shopping destination throughout the region, and we fund the first night fireworks. We are a major sponsor of Arts Night Out, the Summer Music Series, and the Jazz Festival, and past support of the arts include the art installation on the bridge. We have collaborated with the Council on Aging in organizing restaurants to provide large print and braille menus for vision impaired guests. And we have an ongoing collaboration with the Northampton Fire Department to facilitate defibrillator and CPR training for downtown businesses. As you can see, we don't just offer street sweeping, we don't just hang flower baskets. The full scope of services that we provide collectively enhances the vibrancy of our downtown community and we all benefit from that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Jack Finn, please. Hello, I'm Jack Finn from 57 King Street, and I've been a bid supporter since its inception, since the beginning. And it started out when I take a look at my property on King Street. Look, I actually like what I see and my property. I maintain it. I take care of it. You have to look around the surrounding areas. It, you're not just one business. You're not just on an island here. So the same uh, strategy for improving properties that each individual landowner takes to his <coughs> personal property and assets needs to be applied to the whole city. Um, this is not rocket science. Uh, the city has uh, many great assets. It's a beautiful city. Uh, we need to take care of those assets. We need to prevent them from declining. We need to improve those assets. And in my feeling, the best way to do that is to collectively pool our resources, put that work money together and our ideas together and to improve the city as a whole. So it's really taking that urge to improve your personal assets and spreading that over to the common good of everybody in the city. And that's what excites me about the bid as, a, as an organization. Um, Lately, there's been changes to the state laws, which you know about. Um, so we're entering a really a new phase in the, this organization. Uh, everybody in the district is being brought in. Uh, but I think there's a, a caveat here, that a, a change in the law that's really going to uh, benefit us. Um, and this is the mandate that every five years, there has to be a renewal vote. And I think what that's going to do for the bid is it's going to make us more responsive to our membership. Uh, we're going to have to uh, listen to uh, our members, uh, listen to our critics, or we're going to risk losing a renewal vote when it comes up. 
So I think this is going to make this is going to open up the organization to more new ideas, to more um, uh, opportunities to enhance the city. And we've got a lot of people to compete with, uh, casinos or whatever. Uh, so it's a big job ahead of us. But I look forward to working with new members and old members and uh, really improving the situation, taking the best of this law and going forward with it. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Matt Marchand. I live at 38 Matthew Drive in Florence. I'm also a member of Northampton Firefighters Local 108. I'm here tonight to promote um, the blood drive that Northampton Firefighters Local 108 will be putting on April 19th at the Florence Civic Center from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, all donors are going to get a free pancake breakfast that's going to be cooked and served by Northampton Firefighters. Um, you'll also get a t-shirt from the Red Cross and be entered into a raffle for a prize to be determined. Um, so I'm here just tonight just to promote that. and. Um, ask for your assistance in that promotion. Um, I'd hope to see any of you there. Um, and I also brought some flyers that I'll leave here. And you guys, if you want more, you can either we contact me via the Facebook page or I'm sure you guys have our president's email. We can get you some more. So I'll leave these on the counter here. Thank, thank you. you very much. And thank you for carving us up before we dig our blood. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mac Everett, please. <coughs> Good evening, counselors, and thank you for allowing me to speak in front of you. Uh, I live in Ward 3 on Valley Street, and I've been a member of the DPW's reuse committee for several years now. And I'm here tonight to urge you to authorize the establishment of the revolving fund to help defray operating expenses associated with our activities. As at least some of you know, since we've seen you participating, We've established and run a calendar of one-day events open to all residents collecting and redistributing materials for free. These have included medical and sports equipment, textiles, toys, bikes, kids' clothing, arts materials, and more. We've seen a strong, <clears throat> enthusiastic response to our events in the community. Participants rightfully concerned about reducing our solid waste stream have also saved disposal fees and enjoyed taking away useful items for their own use. Conducting these events involves some cash layout for advertising, signage, office supplies, workshops, and occasional tipping fees. While costing taxpayers nothing, a revolving fund would be a valuable tool to help us more efficiently manage those inevitable costs. You may also know that this spring we will submit a proposal to open a long-awaited swap shop at the site of the old landfill. That project will involve its own new set of startup and ongoing operating costs. Money for the fund would be raised through voluntary contributions and fundraisers. At past events, we have had grateful participants freely offer contributions. However, we have had to turn them away for lack of a fiscal vehicle like the proposed revolving fund. The oversight and administration of this fund would be provided by the Department of Public Works. This is a no-cost way for you to support our efforts to reduce the need to ship our trash elsewhere, as we have done since our landfill closed. In addition, reuse conserves valuable resources and decreases the costs associated with production and transportation of the goods we use. Let's take another small but significant step towards a more sustainable Northampton. Thank you. Thank you. Jasper Lapienski, please. Hello. My name is Jasper Lapienski. I live on South Street. It will surprise no one here that I have something to say about the mayor's capital improvement plan, so allow me to address the matter quickly and then move on. I believe that the 15 to 1 funding ratio between streets and sidewalks represents a lack of forward vision that this mayor in particular has the capacity to rise above. <coughs> he has declined to use that capacity. This is a shame as the mayor has paid lip service to the issue and even occasionally delivered thus far. And while the council could choose to amend the plan to correct this, I accept that this is highly unlikely. The above duly noted, 
I will move to address the second largest villain of sidewalk users after funding inequality, which is property owners. At present, the limited regulation and non-existent enforcement of encroachment on sidewalks mean that property owners can effectively annex the sidewalk adjacent to their property with overgrown hedges, rusty old fences, or garden mulch. As sidewalks grow progressively narrower, the lesser width becomes the new normal and Crimea remains Russian. <laughs> Over the winter, a neighbor of mine actually called the police because I had removed a branch on one of his hedges that was blocking my safe access to downtown. While I was not in the least astonished that a Northampton property owner would arrogantly <coughs> assert his right to enlarge his private garden into the public domain, this serves to illustrate how far behind on the issue we have fallen. In the coming months, I will work with the council, the police department, DPW, and other appropriate bodies to create and enact a new ordinance mandating that fences, hedges, and flower beds be kept at least six inches removed from the sidewalk, and somehow, some way, it damn well better be enforced. If we can manage to take the sidewalks back from my neighbor and his fellow Putins, I predict that foot traffic in the city will increase by 75%. What that will accomplish is anyone's guess, but safety and political will both tend to grow with the numbers. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Peter, and I'm going to butcher your last name, Rakagush? It's close. Oh, <coughs> close to being butchered or close? <laughs> it's Rakagush, Peter. Oh, okay. All right. And hello. Um, I'm also on the reuse committee, and I basically want to second everything that Mac had to say. And Diana uh, is also here from the reuse committee. Um, as he said, we actually need a fiscal vehicle for our ongoing activities, I've been on two years or so now, and um, I actually sort of instigated this in a way because I needed a way of handling um, a registration fee for our upcoming um, community tag sale and swap meet this year uh, on the 26th. That'll be Saturday the 26th. It's pretty much rain or shine, but <coughs> um, <coughs> it's really inclement. It'll be, it'll be postponed till the fall. But um, there's expenses involved with that. I mean, everything takes money. So this is a nice way, actually, from rather than us having to go outside to an outside organization like a nonprofit like Green Northampton, which we were thinking of doing, the city suddenly said, oh, OK, well, let's do this method here. Because the, um, the senior center uses about six different revolving funds or something, as I understand it. So. Um, and really, we're definitely going to need it as we get to our reuse, resource, recenter. We're going to name it next Monday um, out on Glendale. And it will be a resource for the community and it very especially, uh, as far as I'm concerned, for artists. So that this can be a way of gathering materials, taking them out of the waste stream, and f figuring out what people need. And um, there's a organization, for instance, in Lowell, that uh, is the WISH project, and they service like 60 or so different uh, service agencies, people are burnt out of houses and all that, stuff like that. So this will be a great way to collect stuff and then redistribute, you know, we don't want to stack it and store it, we want to redistribute it as much as, but there'll be expenses involved in that too. And also we want to get um, sponsors. <coughs> I don't know what the amount is, if it's 5,000, for that fund, can we ask for 10000 I don't know if you can, how to propose that, but I can see that would allow us to get sponsorship. This is at no cost to the city, this fund. So that allows us more sponsorship and ways to get grants, <coughs> et cetera, et cetera, and have a, a place to park them right away. And then um, we want to sponsor workshops, repair workshops, stuff like that. So um, this will be a good thing for the city, of sort of marriage of art and industry, we hope. Okay? Thank you very much. Um, Mark Warner, please. <coughs> I'm Mark Warner, 177 Riverside Drive. And I'd like to call the Council's attention to something that seems to be just coasting through the city over the past month, a proposal for the Rainbow Crosswalk in front of Thorne's Department Store to be placed in the pavement there. This is an issue that a few weeks ago came before the Board of Public Works. It was a five-minute discussion. They passed it. A week later, it went before the Transportation and Parking Commission. They discussed it for a longer period of time, but the discussion there focused on whether it, was, it needed reflective paint and how it was going to be compliant 
with municipal code, with, with the uh, manual and uniform traffic control devices. But there was another, and they passed it there too. But there's an issue here that's missing that I hope the council should deal with or at least get broader public input. And that's the broader philosophical question about whether this rainbow crosswalk should be placed in stone <coughs> in such a prominent location in the city at all. This, of course, is the gay pride symbol. And the person who proposed it is a gay activist who previously led the gay pride parades. Now, is that really something that we believe that this symbol of the gay community should also be a central, prominent symbol of our community? I'm not so sure that either of those committees really deeply believed that. At least they never considered it. When you take a look at the minutes, it never came up. And besides, I don't think it really is within the purview of those committees. Those committees have a mission to go and deal with transportation safety and good traffic flow. But once you get into beyond the question of whether it is consistent with the manual of uniform traffic control devices, and I strongly believe that they've underestimated that the problems they're going to have with the Federal Highway Administration on this, that even if it does pass that, there is still this question of does it belong as part of the city? And that's beyond their scope. That's something that has to be dealt with politically. <coughs> so I think that's up to your, up to the council to deal with. And I hope they will take it seriously and deal with this question explicitly. Do you really think that this is something that represents the interests of all Northampton, of the bid of Smith College? I hope you will consider it seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's all we have signed up. Is anyone else interested in speaking tonight? Suzanne? Hello, I'm Suzanne Beck. I'm, uh, I live at 691 Park Hill Road. I'm the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce here in Northampton, and I'm also a member of the board of the Business Improvement District, and that's what uh, led me to, prompted me to speak this, this evening. I just wanted to publicly thank the City Council for your vote in favor of the amended petition that was before you two weeks ago. I was particularly pleased to see that it was a unanimous vote in support of that petition, and really point out that the bid and the city have a very good partnership and that your that partnership relationship with department heads ha is a particular strength of the bid and it it uh, enhances our ability to do all of the things that Natasha just listed off um, which of course are very critical needs for the downtown business community and property owners so just a quick public thank you um, to all of you who voted in favor of that amendment thanks thank you uh, anyone else interested in speaking? Okay. Um, I'm going to ask the secretary to call the roll, please. Here. Present. Here. Present. Here. 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 We have a quorum, and we are convening. Um, let's see. We have scheduled a public hearing, as I, said, as I announced. <coughs> it's, this is uh, open a hearing. I would request a motion to open the hearing on uh, the submission of the capital improvement program. Make a motion to open the hearing. Second. All those in favor of opening the hearing? Aye. Aye. Um, and we'll start with proponents. And the proponent I'm Assuming is here in the body of the mayor, so he doesn't even need to be recognized, but he is a hearing. The mayor and Susan Wright are also here, is also here. Um, uh, note, I should note that uh, Councilor Murphy, who's uh, on the Capital Improvements Committee, who probably serve as good advice here in some part, uh, is been excused for tonight, but this will be a two reading even if we do vote it on tonight. Plenty of opportunity here from him as well. Your Honor, the floor is yours. Uh, yes, good evening, uh, members of the City Council. Um, this is a uh, document that I presented to you um, on March 3rd, uh, which is a requirement of the new City Charter that requires uh, the Mayor to, pr to prepare and present a five-year capital improvement program, uh, which is a uh, which is a document that, that uh, provides what we estimate to be the city's capital needs over the next five years uh, with the added, um, the added requirement that's sort of new in the charter that, that we, are, we believe we are able to fund and to show kind of the funding streams uh, 
over the next <coughs> five years uh, for those projects. Um, and uh, so the, the document provides some of the background methodology. I do, of course, want to acknowledge uh, the Capital Improvement uh, Committee, uh, which uh, Councillor Murphy, who's not here this evening, is the council's representative on. He's also served as the chair of that committee. Um, that committee uh, worked with all of the submitted projects uh, that were submitted from various departments, uh, worked to give those projects uh, ratings uh, based on uh, the, their, their need, um, and then we used them to then assemble this report um, and, and put together the program that's before you tonight. Uh, to summarize, uh, you know, I think you've, we've tried to provide some charts which show you sort of the breakdown of the, uh, of the projects. Um, it's a total of 75 projects, a uh, total of $13,579,764 programmed over the next five years. You'll see it's a combination of uh, funding sources, um, uh, including enterprise funds. I will note, uh, this is one of the aspects of the capital improvement program because it's essentially uh, you know, a snapshot that we take on March 3rd. Um, uh, that this document obviously will be continually updated every year, every March we have to update it and resubmit it. But for example, uh, this document does not show um, stormwater enterprise capital projects, um, which, uh, which in, a f in future budgets will start to show up um, as we've talked about uh, the, the capacity now to fund stormwater enterprise projects. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, you know, I'm, I've, it's, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. I mean, some of the highlights, I think, um, obviously, uh, we are making um, a, a fairly significant investment in pavement uh, over the next uh, few years, uh, something that is sort of a new, uh, we're, we're sort of moving into new. We've, uh, in the past, given our budget situation, have relied on Chapter 90 funds. Uh, we believe that <coughs> Uh, in order to really address that backlog that we need to begin uh, putting capital, city capital funds in. So you'll see uh, over a $3 million commitment over the next uh, five years. Um, uh, we are also investing in uh, vehicles, DPW vehicles, as well as other uh, city vehicles as part of the program, um, as well as all the other investments in, uh, in our schools, particularly in the area of technology. Um, I would point out uh, that um, uh, that this bud this capital improvement program also uh, contains a f first of its kind uh, commitment to traffic calming. Uh, we are actually allocating and budgeting for traffic calming, uh, which is um, you know one of the missing links uh, that we've tried to get to over time. Uh, when we created the traffic calming program, it was always envisioned that those projects would be funded through the capital improvement process. Um, but we've never had a dedicated funding stream for traffic calming. So this capital improvement program for the first time creates that, uh, some dollars for that. Um, and I would note that that could be included for things like sidewalks and, and uh, speed humps and uh, uh, speed tables and any of the other pieces of that puzzle. Um, so those are some of the highlights. Uh, I can certainly answer <coughs> questions, specific questions that people have. Um, I did actually want to, uh, I did want to raise one issue which actually Councillor Klein had raised, I think several months ago uh, when we were doing the, um, doing the transfers into the stabilization fund and capital stabilization fund. Um, and we did provide some information regarding the capital stabilization fund specifically. Um, and the question you had raised, which was a good one, was about um, when will we utilize the capital stabilization fund? You know, right now we're kind of building that fund up, and when will we actually utilize it for capital projects? And you'll see um, we, have a, we have a page uh, in, the, in, the, in the first few pages of the narrative dedicated to the stabilization fund. You'll see that our goal is to try to get that stabilization, uh, capital stabilization fund to 2.5% of the general fund's budget. Um, uh, and, uh, and so you'll see that in the actual plan we do, um, uh, in FY 2015, FY 2016, we're putting money into the fund, but in 2017 is when we begin to actually draw from it as part <coughs> of the capital improvement program. Um, so that's sort of, uh, was a question you had asked, and and uh, and this plan now kind of creates that formula that we were talking about. So, um, 
that's sort of the, the background on the plan. I've, I've had to emphasize to everyone I talk to, this isn't a vote on the actual projects themselves or the actual spending or borrowing. Um, those will, when, when we c when come forward with the FY15 budget, it will contain specific capital requests. And I can already say, you know, speaking about that s snapshot, um, you know, one of the projects that's on the capital improvement program in FY15 um, won't be on there because it's the garage system, which was in the program, which we've asked you to fund more urgently out of order. So that's an example of the kind of changes that could occur uh, between now and when we submit the budget. But again, um, I think this is a very useful tool. It provides a blueprint for the next five years about the, the projects and the priorities and the needs. Um, there's also some unmet needs, which you'll find in the, in the way back. There's some projects that weren't able to get onto the program. Um, but again, I think that's the importance of this document. Um, in the past, we've typically just put every, every possible project in a big compilation. This actually forces us to say, okay, what do you think we can afford over the next five years and how will we fit that into our, both our budget and our debt structure? Um, so those projects at the back, obviously those, we'll be always looking at those to see how can we incorporate them into the program. And then you can be sure there's gonna be new projects uh, on a constant rolling basis that may, that may uh, supplant a project that's on here. It may be a higher priority. Um, so that's the basis of the plan. I can answer any questions you have. Ms. Wright can answer any questions, and I'll just let well, the update What I was thinking before we got to questions, because I should point out to the public, this is the very first hearing of this type that we've ever had. This mm -hmm. has been established by charter, and it's actually it's, it's long-term planning and accountability for the public and a public discussion of things that weren't necessarily always quite so done in in council on the floor at any rate. Um, so since this is a hearing, I would like to offer anyone else an opportunity if they're interested in speaking to this point, that opportunity now before the mayor, we ask the mayor and Susan Wright to come and ask more questions as we start to suss this out more in depth. Are, is there anyone here speaking in opposition or just speaking to this point at all. Okay, all right. I did want to add one other thing that I forgot to mention, um, and that was just one other, well, un sort of unique feature, not really unique, but I, I wanted to point it out because I think it was important. You'll notice one of the funding sources, when you look at our, um, we have a chart that just shows all of the projected funding sources over the five years, and I wanted to point out <coughs> one of those um, uh, in FY 2015, um, is uh, 319,000 that is coming from the receipts reserved for sale of land account. Um, and I wanted to point out that that's, those are actually the proceeds from the Florence Community Center that, when, that we went through a process last year. We sold that mm -hmm. building. Um, and those, that 319,000 is actually being earmarked back into two of our school buildings to pay as part of the roof repair. Um, so when we talked about that process, about a building that we didn't really have a civic use for <coughs> anymore, uh, and the need to kind of get it off of our inventory of buildings, um, you know, we're, we're reinvesting the proceeds of that building right back into our capital program and, and back into the schools, frankly, because it was a former elementary school. So I wanted to highlight that as well. Um, one other piece that I think is um, exciting, and we're talking about our uh, about our efforts to be sustainable. We are investing um, in some electric vehicles. Um, and actually, we are, uh, we've applied for a grant program through the state that will give us some significant rebates on these purchases. Um, and uh, two of the vehicles we are earmarking for our parking enforcement officers um, who tend to uh, uh, do a lot of idling because, or, or a lot of stop and go. Uh, in the downtown, they also don't travel a lot of miles, so we can envision uh, essentially having those vehicles be gas-free and be all electric uh, for them to be able to do their work and quiet and and uh, and green. Uh, we're also going to be uh, uh, targeting one of those um, vehicles for the uh, fire department inspection officer um, who goes around the city and does inspections around the city again. Uh, and we have a charging station at the fire department. Uh, that's going to replace, a, you know, an SUV or, a, you know, a, a more gas-guzzling vehicle. And we envision, that given the miles they travel in a day, that we'll spend no gasoline on that particular 
uh, vehicle. It'll be all electric. So we're kind of excited about that, and it fits in with our sustainability plan. And we've been working with uh, Chris Mason to uh, to get our get in the queue for those uh, grants, so that we're able to get the rebates on the purchase of those uh, of those vehicles. Um, okay. So, um, any questions of the proponent, Council Labarge? Did you have a question? Um, I want to thank the mayor for coming forth to talk about this capital capital plan and you're correct we've never had that come forth here at City Council I spent a lengthy time going over the very high priorities me medium priorities on this capital plan I think the, the <coughs> residents in the city of Northampton will find this very very thoroughly to go through this and it explains exactly what and what departments every department that we're going to need vehicles ryan road school a lead school which needs a tremendous amount of money being poured at that school for repairs like ryan road um, we have jackson street school also it's there and it really i think it's excellent to see the breakdown for five years so i want to thank you mayor yes and i have to also as always thank the finance <laughs> director who uh who serves on the capital and staffs the capital <laughs> improvement program committee and and uh, is obviously so integral to this uh, this work and this document further questions uh council um i just said um you can probably answer this pretty easily um the parking receipts account yes um so my understanding is that's and as you described that's the excess revenue we get um, that we don't need to spend and it goes into the special account it does and we reinvest it back into uh, the capital infrastructure for the parking system itself okay yes so I was just curious as to why you know FY 15 it's about six hundred thousand dollars and then it goes gets cut in half and kind of gets cut in half again and then it kind of goes away is that just because you envision better management of <clears throat> the parking budget and so there's not I think part surplus. of the reason is that we've uh, we've actually we've built up a balance in that account and we've had a sort of a, a backlog of capital projects in the garage that were that uh, mr. Pomerantz is now um, attempt going through to address the, um, we'll see in there there's well there's the, um, there's the 300,000 for the new system that's in there there's the kiosk there's a um, some more tread repair work in the garage and some other things like that um, and then we are uh, there's a little bit of a lag we uh, begin to then replenish the account with additional revenue so we're sort of spending down some of that revenue that had been built up in the account okay. um, and really kind of doing a blitz of some overdue repairs okay. uh, but the goal is to then continue to rebuild that account okay. to, to go through the rest of his future program so these numbers go down simply because you're not spending from it after <laughs> that's correct and, and okay. yeah Yeah. Yeah. So it's okay. possible okay. that he well, might um, he might come forward with some new parking programs, and you'll see something in 2016. But for now, uh, all of his pro all of his projects were top priority, and we had the funding in that fund, so we wanted to just get them done. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Councilor Kern. Okay. Thank you, um, Mayor. Um, I'm really happy to see the line on traffic calming. I know that since uh, you chaired that commission, Transportation and Parking Commission, it's been probably the largest frustration is having so many applicants and so much need for traffic calming in the city with so little funding. Um, and even this, we probably all agree, is, is a, probably a drop in the bucket compared to what we need. But um, uh, my question is, do you expect that um, this 100000 for fiscal year and not 15 and then the 50 for the subsequent years well uh, is that going to be at the discretion in terms of the spending will that be will the decision be made by the transportation and parking commission based on the priority list that's generated from that body or yeah I, I think um, uh, we had had um, you know we've had we, we our, our understanding of it would be that you would um, the transportation <coughs> parking commission would follow its priority list uh, function um, and you know rank the projects and then try to apply the funding that way um, I think again because this is just the program uh, an order will come forward um, 
to you when, when the DPW says we want to move ahead on that, you know, speed table project or we want to install that new whatever, you know, curb, uh, you know, bump outs or whatever it is that that, that project. Um, and so we would come forward with an order to actually uh, appropriate that fund. So that's sort of the process. So it will go through DPW. But my, my intent was that it's sort of the missing piece of the whole traffic calming matrix. If you've got outside money or development money or mitigation money, um, those projects get higher priority. But this at least allows some of the other projects that may not have those funding resources to, to, to come up on the list and, and get funded. And obviously, we'd love to uh, begin to increase that over time. Um, uh, and obviously, our ultimate goal is as we redo streets, uh, you know, like North Street or, or other streets, that we take a complete streets approach like we did on North Street, where you have speed tables and sidewalks and everything just built into the project. Um, so anyway, that's the thought. That's how we think it will proceed. So DPW will have to engineer it and, you know, just like they would do with any other project. But the idea is to earmark funds just for capital, I mean, just for traffic calming. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Councilor Klein. <coughs> Great. I'd like to say thank you as well. Um, it's clear how much work went into this document, so thank you very much and thank you to Susan Wright. Um, I wanted to ask about, um, I also want to say thank you, especially for the traffic calming measures on Bridge Road by JFK, because that's been an ongoing kind of issue in Ward 7. Um, so it's good to see that here. Um, I wanted to ask about something uh, the the Department of Public Works noted that new equipment might be needed for organic management of specifically Florence Fields. But I'm wondering if um, there is room for some kind of study to happen um, so that we can actually budget for this kind of transition of some kind of integrated pest management or organic care of Florence yeah. Fields as a start, but really thinking about expanding that to all city green areas. Well, actually, um, you know, you're kind of uh, um, uh, giving a preview of my budget message, message, but there is funding in this capital improvement program for um, equipment that we'll need specialized for Florence Fields. And my goal in the <coughs> FY16 budget is to uh, fund, <coughs> provide the funding needed to have Florence Fields be an organically maintained mm -hmm. field uh, and recreation area. So we are going to move forward with that. Um, that is going to happen. And we are, uh, the budget will include some staffing for that um, and also O&M items for the materials that we'll need to do that. And, uh, and the equipment, there's a, uh, we're, we're, um, we're going to be having to purchase a dedicated uh, mower and, uh, and some other equipment that will actually live at Florence Fields, just given the size of that field. So um, we are planning to move forward with that. And, you know, I view it as kind of a, a, a pilot for the city. We're going to pilot that. I mean, obviously, nothing about that is in here. That'll be in the, in the FY15 budget. Um, but that is my intent to do that. I did task the DPW with uh, studying the issue um, and getting back to me with pricing on what it would take to do it conventionally, what it would take to do it organically. Um, and I've made the decision that they should proceed doing uh, organic care. Uh, so we are going to do that. And we're going to, you know, I think it's a way for us to pilot it, to understand what the cost differences are, what the labor requirements is, are, and then perhaps we can begin to expand it to other recreation fields. And is there any um, consideration of regionalization of the purchasing of this kind of stuff? Has there been any, any, any discussion with other municipalities about that? We haven't gotten that far along at this point. No, we haven't gotten that far along. Um, I think, again, we'll be purchasing, uh, as we begin to purchase it, um, th then uh, and, and understand how much we need and what our requirements are, that is something we can look into. But I think for now, this is a way to pilot it to see um, how, we, uh, how we can move in that direction. Yeah. Any other questions? I have to save that for the budget, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I have to have a few surprises, you know. <laughs> Stealing your thunder. It's fine. Um, what, what, you know, is, it should be noted, and I think you did note it, that um, this <coughs> program is essentially a guidebook by which you um, pre-establish some priorities, but the, as you point out, these priorities can change subject to um, 
well, crises for one thing or, mm-hmm. or anything else. So what what pushes a project? What are the what are the uh, uh, forces that actually cause a project to start to rise in priority? Mm-hmm. Is that is it public influence? Is it a sense of uh, is is there a is there a triage menu that would you say safety first and then or I think there I think there are definitely some metrics like that. Obviously, clearly public safety types of items are important. I think when we get in the area of infrastructure, you know, when there are issues like the the um, building envelope failing, like a roof failing or leakage or those kinds of things. I think those tend to be more critical, uh, you know, which is why the two roof projects at the schools have are viewed as a top priority. Um, uh, and then, you know, we look at, uh, in terms of vehicles, uh, we look often the way vehicles are presented to us. We look at, you know, what vehicle is intended to be replaced, uh, you know, and obviously our fleet at DPW, we have, you know, we have vehicles older than I am, for example, and then we have, you know, a, just an aging fleet that we really want to be, um, uh, we want to be smart about getting into a regular replacement program. Um, same with PD, same with uh, fire. You'll note in here that we're doing, um, uh, we're doing a rechassing of, uh, of our rescue, one of our rescue vehicles, one of our ambulances, which is a way to, uh, it's a cost efficient way to extend the life of an otherwise, uh, you know, a, 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 a body that's in pristine shape and then just re- putting it on a new chassis to, and so it's a way to save over buying a new vehicle. So, you know, when it comes to things like an ambulance or, a roof or I think those things tend to be higher priority and then often you know (coughs) funding obviously drives it as well so when you get into the area of of particularly well when you have things like sewer and water that have a dedicated funding source then that's obviously a a different story because those funds can only be used for those projects so we rely a lot on on the DPW and the Board of Public Works to tell us what their highest priorities are there um, so those are so, sort of the issues, and then also we try to have some equity in terms of making sure that um, that some depart, you know, smaller departments are not, you know, just overwhelmed by larger departments, and that some of their needs are met. Um, and then we have to balance that with the schools as well, because the schools have a, a series of needs, not only capital, but you'll notice in here uh, we're we're on the third year of a of a multi-year uh, investment in tech technology. Uh, they've been really trying to upgrade their technology, all the new um, capacity that's needed for online testing and online teacher evaluations, um, and just the sort of modern uh, teaching uh, tools, tablets, and all those things. So, um, so, so that's kind of the process we use. Uh, obviously, it would be easier if we had more money to work with. We have to make some tough choices, and um, and in some cases, we have to work with departments to sometimes reduce projects or modify them or spread them out over multiple years. Uh, but that's that's kind of the the trick. Can can you describe a couple of projects that didn't make the cut? Uh, sure. Uh, let me just uh, get my thing going back here. If, if you go to the very way back. <coughs> Um, uh, of the document, which unfortunately I got to go way to the back here, you'll see that there's a series of projects, um, and again, these in, in many cases the um, you know the committee had ranked at sort of a lower tier because they were not urgent or emergent. Um, one of the things I also want to point out as as I quickly try to get to this, I don't know why I can't just go to the end of the document. But it's because it. It. it takes forever to load up the PDF. Exactly. So um, pages. it's the very last page. So you know, for example, um, you know, uh, you know, we had a request for some new pool lockers at JFK. Um, obviously, a worthwhile project, but but there were some other school items that we just felt were a higher priority. Um, and that we were going to try to get. So, you know, we hope we can get this and work it back into the system. Um, You know, the firing range at the police department, which we all knew when we built the station, we didn't have enough money to do that. Um, It's a, you know, $275,000, $300,000 project. I know they've talked about doing fundraising and trying to, you know, do some private work on that. Again, we'd like to be able to put that in. But for the police, they had other needs that they wanted uh, that were higher priority needs, like their vehicle replacement schedule. Um, and, and again, you see, uh, you know, we've obviously got some, there's this little $28 million DPW facility project uh, uh, that uh, didn't quite make it into the, uh, 
the plan. Um, well, actually, actually, even possibly of greater concern to the public is the 19 and a half million for street resurfacing, which of course becomes yeah. uh, exactly. a, a particularly big concern these days. Exactly, and, and that's why, again, for the first time, we are putting uh, you know over three million toward toward street resurfacing from city money uh, to try to match some of the Chapter 90 money. And again, we're going to be constant. We're going to be looking at how we can increase that over time uh, to to address that backlog of <coughs> streets. And uh, and unfortunately. The problem we're seeing a lot, some of the problem we're seeing with the potholes is because of some of that deferred maintenance. Uh, roads have reached a state of deterioration, and then the the, the, po the potholes become more, uh, more they become more susceptible to potholes. And the, and it, it should be pointed out that the, the state's obligation, former obligation, they've reduced their obligation of uh, Chapter 90 funds historically, mm -hmm. downward. Yeah. And so w that deferred maintenance actually. Is now manifesting as is twenty million dollars worth of road repair that's could be used and sidewalk repair. Yes, um, and that um, uh, because of the state no longer is um, meeting that former commitment. Mm -hmm. Councilor Carney uh, had some questions. Well, just along those same lines in that same block for the DPW requests, that whole section then on. Those are control. those will no those longer are ones, be on. Yeah, exactly. So they'll so actually be taken off the list. Exactly. They'll be so the stormwater the upgrades, the flood control, the erosion <laughs> control, those were projects that um, that will uh, in FY16 be part of a be part of a capital program and <coughs> use stormwater utility. So um, uh, so yeah, that's a great example of that. Um, uh, you know, again, some some very uh, noble, important projects at Forbes Library, um, uh, but just ones that we couldn't get to. Um, we, you know, we just made a major investment in FY14 in their library, uh, in their elevator, their new elevator, 150,000 toward that. So again, we're trying to, trying to balance it and, and spread out very limited resources. Um, just a second, uh, Councilor Adams, did you have a question? I, saw, I thought I saw your hand go up. I'm uh, going, okay, Councilor Barsh. Um, also, in this plan, if you look, there's quite a bit of work from Central Service, and I want to thank um, David Pomerantz for all the hard work that he has put into these plans. And if you look at the Florence <coughs> Fire Station, we've heard about work that needs to be done for several years now, and look at for the year of 2015 what is going to be done at the Florence Fire Station. There is a lot to be done, even at Ryan Road School in the gym. We've been waiting, and I know working very closely with David Pomerites from Central Service, if we do have the gym floor, and all of a sudden we're starting to lose some of the tile on the floors, they're right there repairing it and replacing it. And I'm glad to see that this is part of the plan because mm -hmm. we need new flooring. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We know about that. Again, it's like leaky roof or f gym floor, and those are just the choices we have to make. So we get the roof fixed, then we can start to deal with the gym floor. So are, are there any other questions? Um, I would entertain a motion to close the hearing. Make a motion to close. Okay. All those in favor of closing the hearing, please say aye. 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 Um, this will come up as uh, your at your pleasure, we can vote this um, tonight, if you like. I know that that's, I mean, as actually, as it's been pointed out, this is on the calendar. It's been established in the new charter. Um, so that will come up later in the agenda. Uh, okay. Let's see what I see next up. Um, communications from the mayor. <laughs> Did you miss me? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so um, I, I just had one communication tonight that I wanted to announce to folks, and I know it'll be of some in uh, in a particular interest to several counselors who I've had conversations about this. Um, uh, we are unveiling today, um, and I wanted to announce it at City Council just so that uh, the public would, uh, would, would know about it, a new feature on our city website, um, which is an open checkbook feature, um, which uh, which several, the state of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts has adopted 
uh, and uh, and several other communities have adopted. And I know I've spoken to Councillor LaBarge about it. I know Councillor O'Donnell had expressed an interest in it uh, relative to the stormwater utility. Um, we did some research, uh, looked into how we could figure out how to pay for it. We looked at grants. Uh, we looked at um, uh, some uh, regional collaborations. We looked at some off-the-shelf products. Um, and, uh, and in the end, we ended up working with a local consultant um, and developing a system. So um, if you go to the home page uh, of the city's website, uh, we'll just pull it up quickly. It's on the le lower left part of the, um, right there. So basically, it's, it's, a, it's a virtual check register, and it's tied into our Munis financial system. Um, and so if you scale down there, you can see um, that uh, you can, well, first of all, you've got two calendars. One's a start date, one's an end date. So you can choose a date range that you want to choose from. Uh, you can choose a category. Um, so if you go up, uh, you know, just choose general government, for example. Um, actually, why don't you just hold the category open for a second, Mary, just to show. So there's general government, there's public safety, there's human services, there's cultural and recreation services, public works. Uh, schools and enterprise funds. Those are kind of the general budget categories that we have in our general fund budget. Then if you go over, we selected general government, then if you go over and choose an office, you know, I don't know, assessor's office, for example, and pull it up, it basically will pull up for you um, the uh, expenditures uh, that are made um, in that office over that period of time. It gives you the date, it gives you the amount, the vendor, um, et cetera. Um, and this is pulling real-time data from our Munis financial system, um, which is, uh, and, it, and this will update every Friday. It'll automatically pull from the system and update. It's, great. it's not gonna show you payroll. Um, it's not showing payroll. It's only showing expenditures uh, for all the other line items, not the P&S, but everything else besides that. Um, it will uh, uh, have, um, the enterprise funds are not functioning right now, but those will soon go online. So you'll be able to pull up enterprise funds. Right now, it'll only show you, you know, the exist. Well, even though you voted the new enterprise fund, uh, it really won't go into effect until July one when we act, enact the new budget. But you will have a stormwater enterprise fund line in there, and you'll be able to see expenditures out of the stormwater enterprise fund. Um, so again, uh, and it's got schools, it's got, it's got all the other features. Um, and, uh, and again, I think the state has moved forward with this. There's talk at the state level that this will soon become a requirement for municipalities to provide this functionality. So you know, we figure we'll get ahead of the curve and, and start to use it. And I think it's a great way to be um, <clears throat> more transparent than we already are. I think we provide a lot of information about the budget, but this gives people kind of real time snapshot of what uh, what's happening you know some of the items are you know literally the city's electric bill uh you know um you know buying supplies uh auto repar parts you know all those kinds of things central services you'll see a lot of mass electric because we're paying a lot of uh utility bills for all city buildings um so i wanted to announce that tonight let you know about it um it's on the website uh, we may be tweaking it a little bit more um, but we're really excited to be able to offer this uh, option to our residents. Uh, Councilor Lewar. Councilor. I want to thank you, Mayor. But I know I have talked with you um, during our election as councilors of how many people in Ward 6 who thought this was the best way for our city to go into. And I have to say, it is the best way. Looking at Amherst on how they operate on the open checkbook, people are very pleased with that system. I then came back and, and talked with the mayor in January of this year of people still calling me, asking me if it was going to happen. And I thank you, Mayor, for really working on this because I think it really opens up the transparency and the communication for the taxpayers and the people in the city. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Well, okay. so you got any other toys? Any other things? No, that's all I have tonight. Okay. Well, uh, it's not bad. It's not yeah. bad. That was yeah. Was so, good. and that's the only other communication. That's the only communication I have for tonight. Okay. Um, now we're up to one minute announcements. Councilors, any councilors have uh, announcements? One minute or less. Councilor Adams. Um, 
In celebration of Older Americans Month, the Northampton Senior Center and Community Center will be having an open house Sunday, May 18th from 1 to 3 p.m. And there'll be displays, entertainment, refreshments, tourists, and an opportunity to meet staff. So I hope, I encourage everyone to go to that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor um, Black. Yes, first of all, um, I would, I wanna thank the three JFK students who carried our mayor and city council banner representing our city of Northampton at the St. Pat's Parade, which is Katie Liner, Kalisa LeBron, and Lulu Keeston. So I thank them very much and they have awful, have, have also offered to hold the banner for us on Memorial Day and also for the Pride Parade. Now, um, the 12th Health and Safety Fair, it's a free event sponsored for senior citizens, their families, and the community. Thursday, May 22nd, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Senior Center. And there'll be a lot of demonstrations, displays, and information. And lunch also will be served in Mary Bistro's um, at 11 o'clock to 1.30. So, Patty Shaughnessy and the volunteers and the workers are asking us counselors to let our residents know of this function that is happening. Uh, any other announcements? You have one. Uh, Two. Wow, well, a couple. <laughs> <laughs> um, I couldn't. Do the <laughs> Council Labar just passed on a couple of announcements for me to make. Uh, this is also this is the public workshops about the. Um, help re-envision the Pulaski Park and the discussion of those. And, and uh, this is of critical interest and it also ties in with the vibrant sidewalk discussion and, and also how we perceive our community. And, and in fact, actually probably got tie in with a bit as well. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, this is at the Northampton Senior Center at 67 Con Street, down this way you go. Uh, April 24th from 6 to 8 p.m. That's the kickoff workshop gathering uh, community insight for the park and its connections to Northampton. May 22nd, 6 to 8 p.m., also at the Senior Center, is a preliminary, uh, preliminary site plan community review. And then June 26th, and we'll talk about this in a second, at 6 to 8 p.m. is the final site plan fine-tuning. Um, and when we go back into regular session, we may have to discuss a change of our council meeting because it comes at that same date and there's uh, same date and time. There's a conflict, and um, I, I'd imagine the counselors would want to be present at the, fine, at the final disposition of the discussion. So w and we'll get to that when we get to that. We'll burn that bridge when we get to it, which will be in a little bit in the meaning. Uh, also, uh, the uh, – oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, wait, the date on this is April 2nd. That's not good. No, this is the Memorial Day Parade. Uh, occurs on May 26. Uh, the Veterans Council of Northampton <coughs> announced and inviting us to participate. Um, at the parade assembly will begin at 9 a.m. on Monday, May 26, <coughs> in Florence, and the parade will step off at 10 a.m. Uh, detailed instructions will follow on assembly areas, et cetera. We just sort of wander around until we find people we recognize the way we usually do it. So uh, thank you for your time and participation to the extent. So that's just to give you a heads up. Um, also to ensure in placement in the parade lineup and program, I'm obliged to return this by May 18th. So if counselors can s say yay or nay by then, we can give them um, a heads up about our massive contingent of of wanderers. That's all the uh, uh, Councilor Shara. You have a you have a one minute announcement. <laughs> Do uh, next Wednesday the 9th the PVTA hearings on their route changes will be happening four to six, I think in this room, I'm trying to pull it up, but the Wi-Fi is down. This in, in here. Yes. Um, I urge people to come, uh, particularly in support of the um, adding a route that will go past the Survival Center. Um, so please come out and turn out in support of that. Any other announcements? Okay. Uh, there are no licenses and petitions that I'm aware of. Uh, I'll accept a motion approval minutes from March 20. Second. Second. Any discussion on the minutes? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, now we also have the reports of uh, committees, um, <coughs> transportation and parking commission minutes of February 18, 2014. Um, 
and if you want to move them as a group, there's also uh, the Committee on Social Services, Veterans, Culture, and Recreation meeting February 11, 2014. So moved. As a group? Yes. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on these minutes? Nope. All those in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Um, next up, this is uh, from Mayor David J. Narkowitz's his appointments to committee. Uh, please find attached the appointments and reappointments to city boards committees. The commission this is on the council on aging. Uh, Mary Lestowski of 84 Bradford Street, uh, her term uh, beginning uh, this month, 2014, and expiring on April 2017. Um, and it's a new appointment to uh, replace Elaine Real. Uh, our, also, Margaret LaSalle, 11 Chestnut Street in Florence, the term is the same. Uh, and that's a new appointment to replace Elaine McClellan. And then Lorraine Wyman of uh, 300 Acre Book Drive in Florence, same term, and that's a new appointment to replace Philip Perot. Um, so moved. Uh, what's the motion? To refer second. to committee on rules. Okay. Uh, is there a second on that? Second. No, I'd like to make an announcement about the new appointments. Oh, oh, oh. What I'm asking for is that we suspend a rule on one of them, please. Uh, you want to separate? You want to separate? Yes, that's what I'd yes. like to do. Okay, please. So, uh, the which which one would you like? Which would be Mary Lestowski. All right, you would. Okay, so. Can we refer the other two? For yes. Margaret LaSalle and Lorraine Wyman are referred to appointments. Uh, is your motion? Is yes. there's a second on that? Yeah, second it. There was a, a second, second there. Second. Okay. All those in favor of referring? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, Councillor? Yes. On Mary Lukowski, I'd like to talk to her about her place. Do you, do you want to suspend the rules, though? You want to make a motion rule to suspend? 31. And Rule 31 is a referral to appointments committee. Is that, that's the rule you want to suspend? I want to spend. Suspend that one, please. Okay. Second. There's a second, and there's a second. And would you like to speak to that? Yes. On Mary Lestowski, she's been at the senior center for a long period of time. Mary has done a tremendous amount of volunteering at the senior center. You can go there every day. She's there four to five days a week, four to five hours a day. Mary's life had changed a couple years ago with the loss of a spouse. And her whole life is the senior center. And to have to have her come to be interviewed, which I know what she does down there. She's so faithful and she's caring. And <coughs> talking with her today, when I knew that she was coming in on the floor to be interviewed shortly with the ordinance, I talked with her. And I asked her what her vision was with the senior center hoping down the line and we just heard counselor from ward four talking about transportation with the elderly of finding ways of getting transportation for them her vision is going a little bit further which we haven't heard in a while so i feel that we should vote for her tonight to be on the board um this is on the discussion of the suspension of rules uh any questions or discussion i just have i'm sorry adams yeah. point of order it's rule 30 now since some that's right it's, it's, rule, it, that's it's rule 30. it's, it's rule, rule 30 with the renumbering <laughs> council of Arts just got the new uh updated version so she's I up know. to speed now so. um it, my only con my only concern is actually generated by your concern about the suspension of rules and some uh, you had some constituents concerned about the suspension of rules without the explanation of suspension of rules and there's also been a lot of attention paid to when we suspend and don't suspend rules I, I, does she have an actual objection to um, speaking with the committee on appointments because the other no, members, I, I mean brought, I believe I believe I brought it up because of <coughs> appointments and evaluations if we knew the resident what they've done and Paul being the chair on it we did quite a bit of suspending rule 30 because we knew or if yeah. not talked with them on how and why they wanted to be on a committee we knew what they could do uh council respect yeah I would say as chair the council is right and though it wasn't something we did often it wasn't rare either that when we'd have somebody come forward that 
we knew their work, they were very involved, there were times that we asked the council to suspend the rules. Um, and that was for a new appointment as well, there were times we did that. I also recognize your concern that, you know, um, I am not one of those who is concerned that we overuse the rules on suspension. I think it, it's an economical way to speed up a process. I don't see that we have done that and abused that, so I would be perfectly happy to support I, this I, personally. Councilor Carney is on the committee that it would be referred to. So. Well, my only concern is that the chair of the committee is also not present, and I fully understand and respect what you have to say, Councilor Barge. I, I, what I think has been our practice and what we talked about which would be consistent with the previous committee on appointments and evaluations would be a practice whereby um, in a case like this a phone call a conversation and even a deference uh, to uh, uh, maybe a memo since the counselor isn't here to um, um, to the appointees qualifications that might preclude the need for that person to appear um, that's just my thoughts. Um, I, I'd first just say that I, I know Mary Listowski as well um, from Ward 3, and I think uh, very, very highly of her, and I agree with your comments about her uh, abilities. And, and then I would say that sometimes we, we don't require an interview in the ordinance, as you say. Um, so if it were referred, it may not necessarily mean that we have to drag her to an interview. Um, perhaps that would be appropriate if that were the sense of, of others. So. Last time we we suspended this rule um, simply because the the the, uh, the appointee had been a, a former city employee, and I voted no on that because, in my opinion, just because you're a former city employee doesn't mean that you should you know you should just be able to bypass the whole process. Mm -hmm. But I actually agree with this one because I've known Mary Lestowski for years, and I met her seven years ago volunteering at the senior center, and I know she's been particularly involved with this organization. So for me, it's slightly <coughs> different because I think she's a particularly good fit, and I know that as Councillor Bard said that um, as involved as she's been in the past few years, she's become even more involved because of the change in her life. So I would support this. Thank you. Uh, okay, any other discussion on the suspension rules? All those in favor of suspending rules, rule, rule, rule. 30, uh, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, then I, uh, I would accept a motion to um, approve. To approve. Second. Second. Any discussion, any further discussion on this uh, eminently qualified candidate? <laughs> That's a good question. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? She is appointed. And the other two are referred to committee. And this comes to the point, we're at the point where we would recess for finance. Uh, Councilor Murphy is not present, he's the chair. And in his stead will be uh, Councillor Adams, who is the Vice President of the Council and Finance Committee member. Take it away. Um, if I would request that we um, suspend Rule 11, um, with just because if we do that, we can do away with recessing for finance. And because there's only one item on the agenda, mm -hmm. and you know sometimes we do finance, it seems redundant because we do it in finance, and then we talk about the full council. Well, here there's only one item in the agenda, and it's going to be particularly redundant because we're going to talk about finance and go directly to it to the full council. <laughs> yes. So I, I think for the sake of efficiency, we should. You want to explain Rule 11 for folks watching? Rule 11 spells out the order of business, and Rule Number Nine is that we go into uh, Number Nine, and under Rule 11 is recess for finance committee. So um, I move to suspend Rule 11. Any uh, second? Second it. Any discussion on the suspension of rules again? All those in favor of suspending Rule 11, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So we'll move directly into finance. This financial order, as Council Adams points out, it is the one and the same that we were going to talk about anyway, and the mayor is here also, and you heard public comment about this. This is uh, to authorize the DPW Reuse Committee uh, FY 2014 revolving fund of $5,000, Your Honor. Do we do we put it on the floor first? So um, we have to. You can you, you can put it on the floor. I'd yeah. like to move the question. Yeah. Second. Okay. So it's on the floor, Your Honor. And I should uh, I, well, I should also preface my remarks, uh, continuing a theme this evening that I, I would actually like to request two readings <laughs> on the suspension of rules and two readings okay. on this. Uh, but I have a good reason. Um, so uh, again, as as was explained. Uh, um, 
you know, so eloquently in, in public comment, uh, the reuse committee is really ramping up its efforts and is uh, moving forward on trying to, they've been doing great work to be all along in terms of the, the, the programming they've been doing. Uh, some of you have met, may have gone to some of their events that they've held at Smith Volk, the, uh, the tag sales and the, um, the, you know, the plastic collections and, and, and all the great work that they've been doing. And now this is really the, the piece they've been working on, which is, um, which is uh, moving forward with a swap shop. But what they want to have the ability to do is to, to is accept funds and accept gifts. Um, and, uh, and the reason we're seeking um, two readings is that they have an event on April 24th coming up. Um, and so they would like the ability to have this fund in place so that they can accept uh, donations that are coming in as part of that. And I wanted to point out that Susan Waite is here, um, and she is the, um, you know, she's the city's uh, solid waste uh, uh, recycling uh, uh, coordinator. And so if you have questions about this or the events or any of those kinds of things, she's also here to answer any questions. So, Councilor Spreck. Well, I could ask the mayor this, and Susan might want to answer it as well. Um, one gentleman from the committee spoke about a $10,000 revolving fund. I'm just curious as what would be the reason not to set that figure? I mean, it, we're not putting any money into it. It just allows them to reach a higher level. Was there a reason 5,000 was chosen and not 10 or two or? I do not, I think that was the guidance we got. Um, I don't know, Susan, if you have an opinion about that. Uh, you should come up here if you're voting. Um, um, yeah, that I was the, the motion to uh, recognize Susan. The motion. Second. All those want you to say aye. 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 Hi, my name is Susan Waite. I'm the recycling coordinator for the Department of Public Works. As far as the $5,000 figure, um, I'm not sure exactly where that came from. It's my, it was my understanding that we could amend this uh, if need be, uh, but at the same time, if it's easy to change, uh, why not make it $10,000 sure. to begin with? It's not something that... Um, I think I don't foresee it being an issue that often. However, there are some grant opportunities, and it's possible that we could get a grant to help us do some of the the really great uh, projects that people are hoping to do in the future, like having repair cafes and workshops, teaching people to repair things, et cetera. So there's, it just opens up a lot of opportunity. Mm -hmm. so. Adams. Actually, that this is what I was considering um, when I first read this order, and and my suggestion would be that. Just at the end, um, after the five thousand um, dollars, we we write without mayoral approval. That way, it doesn't it doesn't even have to be any amount. If it exceeds five thousand, it gets the mayor's approval. Then that would be it's like so. Yeah. And the other thing I would point out is that these um, we're creating this today, but it disappears on June thirtieth, and it has to be reauthorized again okay. on on July one as part of the new budget. So we can um, so we can. We always have the opportunity to change it once a year, but certainly you can amend it now if you'd like. That's fine. So this will come up every year for reauthorization? Yeah, if question. you read actually yeah. in the, um, your, the revolving funds all have to be reauthorized each year. So um, so it, it will come up each year. So we, But certainly we can, you know, if, we, if you think 10,000 is a better number to start for the next few months, we can do that. That's We don't have any objection to that. Um, partially the revolving funds are set up that way just so that there's some controls on the size of the funds that are, because again, you're basically giving them the authorization to take in money and expend it for a set purpose. You may remember you've done similar things for the public health nurse, for the immunization program, et cetera. So that's why there's, there's a, usually there has to be a, a limit on it. I mean, I think, so Susan Wright, why don't you get up here? And also, also with the revolving funds, the Department of Revenue sets a cap. So we have a citywide cap that's based on a percentage of our general fund budget, and then there's a department-wide cap. So no department can exceed a certain amount of money in, in, in revolving funds. So the DPW, there's plenty of room to go from 5 to 10. Um, 5 was the number that Ned Huntley gave us, but if you want to do 10, but like the mayor said, you'll be reauthorizing this again in, in June. And what I do when I do those orders is I call every department and find out if they need us to, to increase their amount. Councilor Speck. So uh, Councilor Adams just suggested an amendment he might put forward. Is there any objection to that where we'll keep the 5,000 but put the mayor's approval and then you have leeway if somebody comes up with a $15,000 grant, suddenly you could grab it. Well, right now it reads the DPW has the is the approving authority on this, so there already is a we don't have it doesn't have to come back to council. So the DPW. Um, right, but if we put in an amendment, could we? Councilor Adams was suggesting that 
Mayor, that you would then have discretion to increase that amount if we change that and put an amendment in at the end. Oh, um, is that you the can't, I, I can't, only you can only increase. You can change the revolving fund. I, I, yeah, only um, that so has we, to be done. So that requires a council. In other words, yeah. we have to set an actual figure. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's it sounds like it would be useful for us to know what the cap is if caps are for the different departments and in this case of course DPW. It well it's no department we can't have more than roughly 4.5 million in revolving funds and we have probably I want to say a dozen to 20 revolving funds. Each department cannot have revolving funds that exceed one tenth of that so 450,000. Um, I have a form that we keep that measures this, and I don't remember where the DPW is on this, but I, this five or ten would certainly fit. With right, that. the t the ten thousand would. I perhaps the amenders would just convert it to ten thousand dollars. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Is it, is that acceptable? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, uh, let's vote on the amendment so the now the cap reads ten thousand instead. I'll move uh, that the cap is ten thousand dollars. I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion on that? All those in favor of amending the cap to ten thousand <coughs> instead of five, please say aye. 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 And opposed? Any abs any abstentions? Okay. Um, any other questions along about this? about the revolving fund and the authorization uh, roll call yeah no I'm, way, yeah. I'm just letting Mary catch up here oh, okay. so you all set roll call please Councilor Adams? yes 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 suspend rule 14 he wants to reading second comments. There's a motion to suspend rules. The rule that we're suspending is uh, the requirement of a second reading at the next meeting so we can have the, the second vote tonight. And the motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor of suspending Rule 14, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'll accept a motion for on second approved. reading. Second. No, I don't ask much of you guys. <laughs> so <today. laughs> in order to move this along, Okay. Um, any further discussion on second reading? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. 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 Um, Next in line is the uh, capital improvement plan, but I suspect that most people are sitting here uh, for number two. And if I, I would ask if the council would consider taking it out of order and moving the <coughs> second reading on the bid petition. Oh, yes. yes. Okay I'll with that. that. Yes. Yep. That is, does not require a suspension of rules. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an edict. Um, so we are moving up. Uh, Councilor Adams is recusing himself as he did before. He has a family member with property within the big. Uh, the bid district so okay move the uh, question the question has been put on the floor and that is this is upon the recommendation of the City Council um, would you like to waive reading suspend, with the suspend reading. reading suspend with the reading I'm just going to announce that this is uh, in order to amend the petition to establish the Northampton Business Improvement District and it was approved uh, at the last meeting on March 19th, uh, originally approved March 19th, 2009. The amending the fees. And this is amending that. Yes. Um, uh, Attorney uh, Fitzgibbon is here. He's he's representing our interests as the city, and I would accept the motion to recognize him. Move and make a motion to recognize. Actually, you you moved it right, and it was yeah. seconded. Okay. So it's yeah. on the floor. Second. All right. So uh, and now we're on the motion to recognize Jack Fitzgibbon. Second. And it's been second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, Jack, I, I, and <coughs> before we get to this question, the discussion, that, um, as you know, I sent you a letter and you've responded with a memo. Um, and some questions were brought up during the course of the public hearing, um, particularly most cogently in the one that we, I think we were most concerned was uh, that it was challenged that the uh, 
the applicants did not have the right to petition to change membership uh, conditions. Uh, I think it's uh, Chapter 40 O, Section 9. And uh, would, you, would you like to expand on that, please? Certainly. As I understand it from your request for an opinion, there were two challenges. One was 40A, 40O, Section 9 talks about amendment of the bid improvement plan right. as opposed to the petition. Right. Uh, as I read the statute, and of course this statute was, was fairly recently passed and has not been a lot of case law, but the idea was that there would be a petition and an improvement plan which would spell out the district, the fee uh, structure, et cetera. In this case, uh, the petition contained items about the fee structure and the exclusions of residential units as well as the bid improvement plan. Uh, I, I'm, I'm told that of the seven bids in the state, four of those had the exact same requirement. Uh, so while 4040 Section 9 talks about the amendment of a bid improvement plan, it's my opinion <coughs> that, that would apply to amendment of the petition as well. The reason is because there's no separate mechanism for amending the petition, and the statute is designed to, for, to provide due process for all concerned. And that, this 40 Section 9 process certainly applies across the board, whether it be the petition or the bid improvement plan. So that and combined with the council's inherent authority to amend, uh, to uh, promote their own purposes, I believe uh, there's no problem at all uh, legally with amending the petition and the bid improvement plan. The second question was that the 40 section, I think it is six, allows the municipality to exclude certain uh, types of structures from the bid petition, uh, the bid fee petition um, structure, one of which is owner-occupied residents. Uh, this amendment allows, uh, it used to be, initially it was all residential condominiums and single-family homes. And now we're changing it, at least the proposal is, to include uh, residential units of less than four units, as opposed to owner-occupied. The problem with owner-occupied is there's, that's not tracked by the city. It's not tracked by the assessors. Um, it is usually residential, commercial, or industrial. Um, I think that it is safe, a legislative assumption, to assume that certain residential properties will be owner-occupied. Boston, for example, has made a pronouncement that all residential units are deemed to be owner-occupied, whether they are or not. That certainly strikes me as within the legislative pro uh, process and prerogative, uh, and I see no legal impediment for you to exclude those four units, uh, residential units, as well as resi residential condominiums, as you have in the past. I don't think there's any prohibition at all against any of these amendments. You have to decide, of course, whether it's in the public interest, but the process, as far as I can see, in my opinion, is that it's legally appropriate, and you can go ahead and vote on it if you so choose. There was one other point that was brought up uh, by the opponents that was of some concern, some expressed concern, was that there's pending litigation, uh, one challenging, actually, in a court that doesn't have any direct <coughs> association with Northampton, it's, but uh, challenging the ability for the uh, this enabling law to even exist, and then the other one was actually there's a pending suit against the establishment of this particular bid, and the suggestion that the fact that they're pending should somehow constrain us from deciding on this at this point. Uh, not at all. Uh, it's sort of apples and oranges. That suit will continue on. Uh, if they have to amend it, uh, they can do so. The, the important point is that suit may not be resolved. I understand there's a trial, I think, scheduled. That's the state court suit you're talking about, right? as opposed to the federal suit. It's scheduled for May. So assuming that's heard, I mean, it's been continu continued several times, we may not get a decision for months, many months. Uh, there's no practical reason to delay this vote. It won't have any effect upon that, that uh, litigation at all. Councilors, have any other questions of uh, Attorney Fitzgibbon? No. Okay. Appreciate your memo, Jack, and I, and I appreciate taking the time as we deliberate oh, this. I appreciate that. Um, 
Any further discussion on on this application? The petition, as you recall, is to reduce um, rates and also to modify the definition of, of who, uh, membership. Any other discussion on this? No. Take it away, Mary. Roll call, please. Councilor Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Sharon? Yes. Sharon? Yes. Yes. Passed unanimously of eligible voters, and it is passed in second reading and has been approved. And thank everyone for their time. Um, okay, so this brings us back up to uh, item number one, which is the uh, capital improvement program, the adoption of such. Uh, I'll accept a motion to put that on the floor if anyone's so Motion to put it on the floor. A second. I did already. Oh. <laughs> okay, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, discussion on this, Councilor Specter. Just a question. Uh, so, so what we're doing is just, we're just saying, uh, yeah, we've seen it and we adopt the plan. I mean, is that the? Right. I mean, remember. Just so people know, we're not adopting the specifics or approving right, right. money so or anything we, like that. It's just again. Because this was stipulated by charter and gotcha. it came up. Okay. And it actually it made a lot of sense when we have the charter debates. Um, this was to allow uh, uh, the public to get a sense of the priorities and how they've been gotcha. established and so that we could review them. And I mean, uh, you know, arguably if there are items in here that we take issue with that we're prepared to take issue with uh, um, later on, or we can take issue with them now if you have any points about that. But the fact is, is that it gives us the opportunity to, it's the first bite of the apple, if you will. And, kind. and not only that, they'll have to, they will still need to come before Absolutely. us for expenditures as they as Absolutely. They exactly. This is a bonus access point. <coughs> right. And it also actually compels uh, the executive branch to actually present a reasonable five-year plan or four or five-year plan so that, so that people understand that this isn't uh, reactionary or, or whimsy and and I think I think it was a great addition to the charter personally although we still haven't figured out how to do it elegantly yeah. but uh, you know elegance not my middle name so well, okay. counselor I just I, I tossed you that softball just so you oh, could thanks. be eloquent <laughs> and explain once again what we were doing here and why we had the plan you did a wonderful job. Our charter was in effect last year, but we didn't have this presentation last year. Did, did was that? We did because they didn't have. They didn't. I think the way the calendar worked, there wasn't a way to get this this assembled. Yeah, we, I think the, we, at the time this was one of those issues that we had said we were going to do when the four-year mayor term began, right. um, because we were kind of between mm -hmm. capital plans. We had just done a capital plan, and so yeah, we sort of. Uh, I guess our interpretation of the charter was we were going to start under the new under the new elected government with the four-year mayor and the two-year council so and I do remember being discussed last term um, and and I think the council gen in general agreement felt that, was, that made the most sense I mean yeah. particularly if you ask someone to generate a long-term plan who might not be here um, and the fact that there already was a plan in place for the year the, uh, the following year so so hopefully I mean I, I think this is one of the last items that we get to do for the first time <laughs> Charter, I hope. So, um, so any other questions or comments on the uh, capital improvement program that's proposed? Uh, the motion's been made and seconded, and a roll call, please, Mary. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Okay. Um, next up is the uh, second reading for um, parking meter locations and regulations. Um, Please waive second reading. Okay. There's been a request to waive reading, and I, which I will honor. Um, I'll accept a motion. So move to approve. Second. <laughs> We're waiving the second reading. No Motion's been made in second. Bad. Counselors? I'll say? Yeah. yeah. I'll yeah. say. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, the motions are made and seconded. Any further discussion on this? No? Mary? Yes. 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 All right, that passes in second reading and it is so. Uh, 
Uh, next up is the second reading for the fee structure for certain permits to be simplified. Um, Move to approve. This motion made. Is there one? Second. A second. Uh, would you like me to waive reading on this? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, get just, a little... I just want to clarify. I know the point was made at the last meeting, but for folks at home who might be looking at this, um, that fee structure is actually going to incorporate all of the other ancillary fees. Correct. So while it may appear to the public that it's an increase, it actually is not. So. Have I, that. Yes, and, the, and thank you for that clarification because that's kind of important. I mean, that yeah. was, yeah. Um, any other, any discussion on this? Uh, roll call, second reading. Yes. 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 That also passes in second reading. Um, next up is the replacement of a uh, moratorium on construction of seven plus units in the URB district with language specified. Take them as two of them as a group. You want to take five, six, seven, and eight as a group? Yes. Uh, yes. For the eight. Oh. No. Not eight. Five and six. Five and seven. Oh, five and six. Yes, five. five and six. Okay. So the motion, the motion from Council of the Barge is to move five and six as a group. Is there a second? Yes, second. Okay, uh, the, the, and the second one, uh, that, so, and the referral is to? To, um, it's not to ordinance. Ordinance. <coughs> right. Is everyone okay with the ordinance? Yes. All right. All those in favor of referring, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Next up is uh, also a referral to be referred to uh, ordinance. This is a... Signs permitted in the <coughs> district projecting blade signs and standard wall signs by right. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor of referral, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Number eight, the Joint School Committee, uh, the Joint City Council School Committee Conference Committee. Um, this is uh, a language change <coughs> uh, from Councilor O'Donnell. And Council Shara uh, recommendation, and this to be referred to also to be referred to ordinance. Is there a I, motion? I would like so to moved. also refer to the joint and city council and school committee. Two two committees. Okay. okay All righty. Um, um, so so the referral is to the joint school committee and also to ordinance. And I'll move that. That's moved in the second. Anyway? Second. Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion on referral? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that's referred. Updates from the council president? Oh no, <laughs> there aren't any. Uh, any information requests? Uh, this is a charter provision two seven. Uh, <coughs> yes, actually, and this is the new business item, and that was. Um, about our meeting date on June 26th. Oh, yeah. Yes, so can you clarify again the conflict? Well, if you recall, going back earlier this year, we actually modified <coughs> the council meeting. Doesn't wouldn't normally be scheduled to appear on June 26th, but we changed it because Mary, God bless her, was going to have a vacation then. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and and uh, back on the 19th, and so in the fact in the in the event that we didn't have anyone to back her up. It just made sense to change the date. So we agreed to change the date. Now, as you know, we're stricken yeah. because Mary has found it in her heart to go wander across the street and go stay in a locked building with a bunch of people who all dress the same um, yes, and get home at a regular hour. Okay, well, anyway. So, <laughs> yes, right. And she has a gun. Um, the... the so the necessity for that date is no longer there. Right. So we could go back to the 19th, which would allow us to uh, attend the uh, Pulaski Park meeting at the Senior Center. Do, if you look at your calendars, does anyone have any objection reverting back to June 19th as our scheduled date for meeting? Hey, no. Did you say again what time? You're fine with it then, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
words. Okay. From the 26th to the So the 19th will be the city council meeting? Yes. Will be that's, the council that meeting. was the original. Okay. And, and the 26th, the 26th is, the, is the, the, Pulaski meeting Park. At the Pulaski Park. I, I just remind me again, what time is that? That's uh, 6 to 8. <coughs> and that, okay. To my myriad of papers here. Blood drive. <laughs> you have it. 6 to 8. 6 to 8. All right, I, actually, I would like a, a vote on that date, just if, uh, so if someone would make a motion. I will make a motion. Second. Second. I'll second it. Okay. Any discussion? Yes. <laughs> I, I, I brought it to Bill's attention because I had great concerns because there's three sessions. And the last session, even though it's a site plan one, was very, very valuable if you have attended the other two. So I asked Bill if he would bring this up because I plan on being involved in it, and I know that Councilor um, Klein wanted to get involved with this with vibrant sidewalks, so now is your opportunity. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of changing the date, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? That's it for new business. Anyone have anything else? No, thank you. Uh, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So, oh, yeah. Second. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Ta-da. What time is it?